Hello. Today, my friends and I will be performing the words of teenagers from across the country. Kids, just like us, who put to paper what this experience of quarantining in the midst of a global pandemic is really like. And while the stories you'll hear today won't necessarily reflect our own individual perspectives, there's a shared understanding of our united new reality that feels universal. So we'll start at the beginning, when the regular stuff started to change. I used to own a bright orange bike. There were 21 gears and durable shocks and tires so I could hop curbs and coast off-road. There was a light in the front and back so I could see where I was going and everyone else could too. There was nowhere I couldn't ride it. Sometimes I'd take it down to the train station, lock it up with the other bikes, hop on train to the city, and it was always there when I got back. Until one day, got off the train, it was gone. Turns out there are no indestructible bike locks. Just like I always assumed that my bike would always be there waiting for me, I always thought I knew what my senior year in high school would look like. 180 days, one day we'd skip, go to the beach, one day we would visit our elementary schools. There'd be a prom, a play, endless nights with friends. There'd be hundreds of blue graduation caps floating in a sunny sky for just an instant. But, like my bike, that imagined senior year is gone now, too. I guess anything can be taken from you. The walk home that night my bike was stolen. It felt longer without my wheels, but this... It, I guess I don't know how this feels yet. I guess it hasn't really even hit me. Maybe it will soon. Maybe. Everything seems like maybe. It was around midnight on January 24th or 25th. Me and Olivia were the last ones left in the school dining hall, cleaning up after the Lunar New Year party. I asked Olivia if her mom could give me a ride to the Airbnb where my mom, who had just flown in all the way from Beijing, was staying. Olivia said, sure, but when we got to her car, I was confused. Her mom was wearing a face mask, and then Olivia pulled a mask out of her back and put one on too. They explained that Olivia's mom had just gotten back from China, so they were being extra careful taking precautions. Her mom was sleeping in the basement, she said. I told them that my mom had just arrived from Beijing and they suggested we stay in different bedrooms, use different bathrooms, don't hug and wear a mask at all times. I was terrified. The last time I'd seen my mom was the year before and she was only supposed to be here for one week. I didn't want to feel alienated from her. I wanted to be close with her. Is that really necessary? I asked Olivia's mom. It's pretty bad back there, her mom replied. In that week, we shared together, mother and daughter isolated from each other in the same space. I experienced a feeling of distance I'd never felt before. And that was just the beginning. My brother's boyfriend drinks a lot of milk. I didn't realize how much until the second week of quarantine, but he drinks so much milk. He's from Greece, but he's visiting us during their spring break from college, and now he can't go back to college or back home. So he's staying in the room my mom used to use as her office. We used to get along fine, but now we're fighting all the time. He's not just regular loud, he's blast Eurovision on a nightly basis kind of loud. He's like that rubber toy you leave on your desk and out of nowhere it loudly rockets in the air and scares the crap out of you. 
He's like that. I try to have sympathy. I don't know. It must be hard for him adjusting to an unfamiliar culture and a household that he doesn't know, but this situation has me hella confused. Uh, tonight, when I was washing dishes, which shouldn't even be my chore, but my mom makes me wash everything in the sink every single night, even if I didn't eat a single grain of granola. Uh, I scrubbed the fried rice off a pan and began to cry. I don't know. Maybe it was because of something I read in the New York Times Daily Briefing, but then again, maybe it was because of something else. Quarantine is a luxury some people don't have. I took a ride in my car and saw a homeless man. What choice does he have but to shiver in the cold and stand as people pass? He isn't wearing a mask. Maybe he can't. He isn't staying at home because he doesn't have a home to go to. Quarantine is something I only heard about in movies. There's times where I forget. But then, I remember. My neighbors are still outside, but downtown looks so dry. My parents are always home now. Good time to family bond, I guess. I have online school. I actually prefer it. It's better than real school. People are dying, but... My parents stocked up on food, especially my favorite, mozzarella sticks with sweet and sour sauce. Some say this disease is fake. Some say not to take the vaccine when there is one. I say, let's see what kills us first. Oh, Corona, how sweet and sour you must be. Lives are changing. Those on the front line working 16-hour shifts, all of us refraining from touching, avoiding the touch the human body yearns for, searching for connection, keeping our social distance. We avoid the touch we use to greet one another, searching for connection, keeping our social distance. This virus has got us in quarantine. We're stuck inside, only able to leave with gloves, wearing masks. I cannot visit the ones I love, and neither can you. Searching for connection, keeping our social distance. In my neighborhood, people gather on their balconies to clap and sing. All day long, I watch TV, waiting for an update, an end date, a sign. And yet the numbers climb. Up. Up. The death toll rises. I wash my hands. A hundred times, I wash my hands. I pray to let this be over very soon. And yet my heart feels different now. Are we stuck here forever? Surging for connection while keeping our social distance. It seems that every hundred years or so, the world is cursed with a pandemic. It just so happens that this time around, I, a 15-year-old girl, have been caught in the middle of it. My mind's been running wild. I find myself questioning the cycle of my life lately. The cycle of going to school, seeing my friends, getting into the same drama, and then getting over it. I think to myself, what is this for? Do I think too deeply? Or not deeply enough? Does it really matter? Maybe I don't need all that. Maybe all I really need to do, all I really need to be learning, I'm doing and learning now in these weeks stuck at home. I learned how to tend a garden. I learned how to make a lemon cake. I learned how to make a chocolate chip cookie where the main ingredient is avocado. I learned how to cook dinner for my family, how to properly walk my dog, how to be healthy, like really healthy, and not just how to get crazy skinny. I mean, sure, school is useful. It's where I learned about algebra and where I made my best friends, but I think maybe I would rather learn about living and being happy. I don't know. I guess I'm just alive and thinking. And maybe that's enough right now. Born. 
Yeah, that's it. Bored. Seems like the only way to express how I feel. I can't believe a disease can make this feel so real. People dying left to right. People wearing masks and just trying to survive the night. We want everything to be just fine, yet some can't bear to listen to what will guess there. Just stay in the house, they say. Be patient, they say. But until then, born. Yeah, that's it, bored. During these terrible times, these days of people risking their lives to save others, I find myself questioning the normal. Like, why, you know? I mean, it's all just made me wonder, what do I really want to be doing? I think the main theme of everything that's going on right now, I mean, when you really boil it down, I think it's love. Love. People staying away from their family members to keep them safe, that's out of love. It's twisted, unreal, but still, love. I realize that I want to be doing what I love with the people that I love right now. Because time suddenly feels mysterious, unique, and limited. The past few months have been a time of unprecedented uncertainty. People ha have had to deal with problems they never thought that they would encounter. People have had to buy food in bulk because they don't know when they'll have a chance again. I went to buy hot sauce. Usually there are dozens of brands, but there was only one bottle of one brand left on the shelf. So I bought it. When I was told that I had to stay home in order to survive, it was jarring. It was surreal to learn that in my senior year, I wouldn't be getting a prom or a graduation. I don't know what's gonna happen when I go to college. If I even get to go to college. I don't know if I'm gonna have a summer job or not. This virus has brought the entire world to a standstill. I used to wake up every morning, looking at the ceiling of my bedroom, looking for some motivation to get out of bed and go to school. Then my mother would yell at me with her watered down Dominican accent, you need to go to school or you no graduate. Every morning for four years, I used to hear that. You need to go to school or you no graduate. Well now what? Where's the future I was promised? I blame the world leaders that don't know how to lead. My father was absent those mornings where I struggled to get out of bed and go to school. Then it was my single mother yelling at me every day in the morning that made me work hard on these things. Things like track, softball, debate, and musicals. These things took my time but gave me life. Four years to get a diploma. A diploma that will probably now just be a PDF file attached to an email, but a diploma all the same. I will graduate, Mama. I will get out of bed and go to school and graduate. The show must go on. And so it must. When this whole thing started, none of us thought it was going to go on as long as it has. And yet, here we are, far from those first days of unknown and confusion and now smack dab in the middle, with no definitive end in sight. At first, it was only two weeks. Then four, then who knows. Time has little meaning when there are no big tests to study for, no sports games on TV, and no hanging out with friends. I try and do little things here and there to make the days stand out from each other. Schedule a Zoom call, start a new workout routine, maybe go for a walk. 
I guess these little things give me something to look forward to, something to do. But that just shows how depressing the situation really is. The two biggest events of my week are a Zoom call and a walk around the block. I try and feel grateful about having a loving home and food on the table, and I am grateful. But I can't help it. I don't feel fortunate. My two favorite things are playing baseball and going to sleepaway camp. Baseball is done for, and the fear that camp might be too was so painfully bad that I don't even think I can imagine it. Thinking of having the two things that bring me the most joy taken from me just makes me want to break everything in my house. So many people are still going outside, still hanging out with friends, still ignoring the CDC's recommendations. So many people are doing what they want to do and not what they need to do. And it's those people that ruin it for everyone else by flipping off the switch that could turn on the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like a second grade kid, sitting quietly in class, but has recess taken away because the two kids in the back of class won't shut up and do their work. Those kids have ruined recess for everyone. Time is irrelevant until all of America takes this seriously. Time is irrelevant until the pandemic is resolved and the light at the end of the tunnel is turned back on. I have learned to share my smile, even with my mouth covered. Right before the world went into lockdown, my family and I landed in Prague. We flew halfway across the world, from Boston to my grandparents' home, right as a new law came into effect requiring all of the Czech Republic to wear face masks in public. I did my best with my rudimentary sewing skills to create a makeshift mask from an old t-shirt. Barely able to breathe or see, I went for walks around the city. Something I was used to doing, but now it seemed shocking. I could barely recognize anyone because their masks blocked their smiles. And suddenly everyone became a faceless stranger and, and, and I couldn't help but feeling like the apocalypse had arrived. How obscene the model's uncovered faces now seemed looming over me from huge billboard ads that lined the street. But at least I could see their smiles. Those nameless models were the only faces I could see. One day I returned home from a sterilized shopping trip carefully removed my mask and diligently washed my hands, and I caught my reflection in the mirror. And I don't know why, but I smiled. And I saw myself, my own face, and, and I realized. A smile happens with your whole face, not just your mouth. So from then on when walking the streets of Prague, I smile at everyone despite my face mask. I let my eyes crinkle up in a grin, and I think of all the reasons I have to be thankful. I can share my smile, I think, even with my mask on. My bedroom used to be the attic. It was supposed to be temporary, my mom said. I wasn't supposed to be up here for long. But now, now, I'm up here all day. A dresser, a bed, bookshelves, a desk. It's where I type, where I sleep, where I paint. It's where my back aches, and my head aches, and my toe aches. Because I stubbed it on the corner of the bed that sticks out. Because no one's supposed to actually be living up here. I careen off the plaster walls like a runaway marble in a miniature pinball machine. When I want to focus. Like, when I want to feel like my hair is less like when I wake up and more like my hair after I take a shower, I sit at my desk. But the desk can't drown out the noises of the world below. The basketball my brother's bouncing, the engine of the bored neighbor just chilling in his car, the lawnmower of the guy with the perfect yard. Big windows are a bad idea for study hall, but they become my refuge way up here, way up here in my attic bedroom, or as I like to think of it now, my watchtower. On the day July 21st, I was born along with my best friend TJ. Our moms were best friends, so we were always together and we gradually became besties too. I was always the crybaby, Still am, but he was always the one to tell me jokes and make everything okay. In the third grade, I remember a girl said something that I never forgot. Someday, you and TJ will be like a mommy and daddy. My sister says best friends always wind up together. <laughs> 
I never told TJ what that girl said. Everything we did was 100% together. We never did anything apart. He felt that everything was done better as a team than just by yourself, so that's how we did everything. But when we turned 10, things changed with us. I started cheerleading and he started playing football and before we knew it, we rarely had time for each other. And now we're in high school and everything's different. All the girls are crazy for TJ's chocolate brown skin mixed with his pretty brown eyes and his twists. I'm the only mixed Latina in the 11th grade. Esta escuela es simplemente... Wow. Recently, I realized that I hope that girl from third grade was right. I mean, it would be nice if best friends did wind up together. What shaken bacon? TJ asked me in the hall. It was the last day before they closed our school. Your birthday's coming up soon. What are you planning? He asked me, leaning against his locker. It, it turns out it doesn't matter if I was planning anything for my birthday or whether or not TJ was flirting with me at his locker that day. Everything's frozen now, including me and TJ. Yesterday, I watched my mom watch her uncle's funeral from a laptop computer. The stream wasn't live. She had waited for days to watch it. She didn't want to disrupt our online internet connection. As a family of five living in the backwoods of New Hampshire, our connection can hardly withstand a single phone call, let alone a video stream. My mom never mentioned needing the internet connection. She didn't want to disrupt our online service. Whenever someone needs the internet connection, everyone else has to shut off their devices. And even still, we have to cross our fingers for it to work. She didn't want to inconvenience us. She didn't want to disrupt our classes, which she calls essential. In the video of her uncle's funeral, everyone was wearing masks and gloves. They stood six feet apart, unable and unwilling to embrace or shake hands. I watched grown men hesitate to wipe their tears from their faces as they walked into a room alone to grieve a dead friend, father, brother, uncle. My mom asked if anyone needed the internet connection between two or three that day, or if it would be all right if she kept watching. Keep watching, mom, I said. Nothing else matters. The days have started to repeat themselves. I don't know if it's Wednesday or Thursday. Did I take the elderberry my mom left for me? Did I take the black seed oil? I don't know the date. Everything's a blur. When you have people within your household who are essential workers, one being your mother, the feeling of fear begins to grow larger every day. When she coughs, I panic. When she sneezes, I panic. The other day, she complained of shortness of breath. Does she have it? I panicked. This is what each day looks like for me. The same feeling of constant fear, panic, agitation, and impatience. Every day is the same. I can't do this anymore. I've run out of snacks. I've run out of Netflix shows to watch. 437. That's the number of peanut M&Ms I counted in the candy jar my mom bought me. On Easter. I've mastered every gadget on my Apple Watch. I could probably do the guy's job at the Apple Store. I've been digging so many caves on Minecraft. I could probably have done all the silver mine work in Mexico in the 1700s all by myself. I've been taking three showers a day just for an activity. Been taking naps like a baby. I thought we'd be back in school by now, but nope, no end in sight. Sending my own thoughts is no good. It gets depressing. All I keep thinking about is the number of deaths in my state 
in my country, in my world, increasing by thousands every day. But then I distract myself with online school. I guess it's not all that bad. These classes are a breeze now. Everyone did pretty good on their exams. I'm pretty sure most people probably cheated, but whatever. Does it even matter anymore? All I used to say to myself when I was in school was how much I want to be home, but now all I want to do is go to school. I miss my friends. I miss restaurants, ice cream parlors, movie theaters. Fun. This is so boring. I, I can't do this anymore. Honestly, quarantine has been fun for me. Since the beginning of spring break, I've been quarantined with my mom. I've watched new shows, started to exercise. I haven't touched the piano in a while, but really, it's been a great time for me. I get to do lots of things I've always wanted to do, like learn a new coffee recipe from TikTok, which tasted awful, but still, I got to try it. Watch movies with my mom, which is fun, even though she still doesn't know the difference between Professor X and Magneto. Sleep in and read. I read And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. 100% recommended. I'm also rereading Little Women, one of my favorite movies from this year. The good thing about quarantine is that I'm always with my mom, so I can always find comfort in her. Quarantine has given me a lot of time to think about what I want to be in the future. I don't think being a piano teacher is my dream job. I think there's something else out there for me. I wake up to the sun on my face. Its rays fall across my skin. The warmth forces a smile, and it feels as though the sun is trying to coax me outside to join her. I hear the birds chirping their morning songs, yet everything somehow feels too quiet. The world is still. I am still. For a moment, I forget where I am, and I breathe. And then it hits me. The air leaves my body and I feel empty again. The quiet around me starts to feel so loud, but I can't move, can't run away. I put my hands over my ears, but the quiet still follows me there. I pull myself together, get ready for my day. Yet, the silence still follows me. And when I sit down to start my new normal of online school, I can't concentrate. It feels as though the world has decided to play some kind of sick joke on all of us. I'm waiting for it to finally end. Waiting for the film crews to pop out and point out all the hidden cameras. I look at my computer and I see my teacher talking. Yet, his words pass right through me. The silence joins me again. I think maybe we'll become friends. Me in the silence, because the silence can't be quarantined, right? I clean the window sometimes. I don't know why, I just do. Something about the chore helps the sunshine through. I clean the window sometimes, and when I do, I look down. I see a glistening pebble, perfect, its shape round. I clean the window sometimes. It seems like too much work, but the way the sun shines through, the pebble seems to smirk. And smirking at me as if it knows what I'm going through. Sometimes I just think about breaking that clean window, just so I can get some fresh air, just so I can calm down, just so I can see that pebble. Is it mocking me? I wonder. Sometimes I clean the windows, but what I really want to do is get out of here. 239 days into this quarantine. And I think what we all really want to do is get out of here. But we can't. Not yet. But that doesn't mean we've lost hope. We're the next generation of leaders, thinkers, doers. The optimism is up to us. I saw a shooting star last night. I was in my backyard staring through the branches of a giant tree. 
As soon as I spotted the star, I felt a gasp escape from my throat, cold air rushing into my lungs. It took me off this planet into a wide universe, and I wondered, who else was looking up at the sky? At least five people on my block have gotten the coronavirus. One of them even died. He was a grandfather who came here to be with his daughter's family. I remember looking out my window years ago, watching the moving truck arrive and when he first appeared. Then looking out my window just last week to see the ambulance arrive to take him away. My world is widely different. We've all been taken out of our universe and thrown into another. We've all been thrust into darkness, just like that flying meteor. But I try to remember that although the night sky looks black, that there are more than 100 billion stars in our galaxy, lighting the way on the long, dark path. Honestly, my life has gotten significantly better since we've been in quarantine. I mean, of course it hurts me that so many people are hurting, and if I could change some circumstances, I would. But all I can say is that my life has changed for the better. During spring break, I went to the grocery store and the baby coughed in the checkout line and the entire store seemed to twitch. Citywide warnings had just begun, but they were slow to reach Wilmington, North Carolina. And I had just started seeing this new boy, which made the world exciting and filled with rainbows. So as the warnings on TV grew stronger, Billy, that's his name, and I decided that if one of us got sick, we'd both get sick. We were together all the time. Slowly but surely, the beaches and the restaurants and the libraries all got shut down, but really was everything I wanted, so I didn't even care. My mom basically let us quarantine together, which meant we were watching Twilight movies and eating takeout and ramen every night. When school started back up, we moved to a pass-fail system, which coordinated conveniently with the schedule of falling in love with a boy. I mean, listen, it's not just my mental health that has skyrocketed. The Earth seems to be recovering from global warming or something. I keep seeing all these posts on Instagram questioning if humans were the virus all along, but I think it's just this feeling of love that I'm experiencing for the first time in my life that the world has been missing for so long. Yes, there is fear. There is isolation, death, yes. There are overcrowded stores and closed schools. But we don't have to hate each other. We don't have to fail or suffer from loneliness. We don't have to be selfish with toilet paper. We don't have to allow our fears to kill our souls. If we choose to allow our fears to kill us or hurt others or leave us lonely, the more damage will be done. Remember, after a storm comes a rainbow. My grandma taught me that. I am Rapunzel and my house is my tower. Traumatic? Yeah. But it's the truth. I'm confined to my house. It's only reasonable that I feel this way. I have my driveway and my backyard. But it doesn't feel like enough. Oh, how I can't wait to go beyond my home again. What will I do? What will I say? Oh. I know, I know exactly what I'll do. When this is all over, the first thing I'll do is take a walk. The first thing I'll say is, hello. Hello to the birds, hello to the trees, hello to the sunshine beating down on my face. Hello to the grass that's not in my backyard. Hello to the clouds who I've only been able to see through that one window downstairs. And I will talk to the flowers who have been waiting for me. Oh, how we've missed you, the flowers will say. I will say hello to my first cup of coffee with a slight touch in my lips, and hello to the sriracha on my salad when I ask a waiter to just go with it. And when I see my friends again, I will pause. I will forget that it's okay at first, but then I'll remember that it's all over, and I'll pull them in for a warm hug, and our bodies will say hello again. But for now, for now I sit here and wait, and I write. I write about how I will say hello again. Hello to the birds, hello to the trees, hello to the sunshine beating down on my face, hello to the clouds who I've only been able to see through that one window. And I will talk to the flowers who have been waiting for my arrival, and they will say, oh, how we've missed you. 
So it's clear no matter who you are, right now it's basically impossible to not be affected by the events of this year. And what can be disheartening is we don't know if all this will ever end. If a vaccine will come out tomorrow. If that will even change anything. Who knows? But maybe something good will come out of all this. Thank you.